Next, we're going to have Susan Tai present on evaluating the economic benefits of pavement preservation. Professor Susan Tai currently holds the endowed chair in sustainable pavement engineering and is the director of the Center for Pavement and Transportation Technology at the University of Waterloo. She is also currently the president-elect for the Canadian Society of Civil Engineering. She is the author of over 400 technical publications in pavements and infrastructure, including being the principal investigator on the 2013 Transportation Association of Canada Pavement Assessment Design and Management Guide and is involved in the number of national and international research projects. Please, let's welcome Susan. <laughs> Thank you and good afternoon everyone. It's my pleasure to be here to share uh, some of the work that we're doing in Canada related to pavement preservation. Um, about a third of our research um, that we do relates to you know, concrete pavement, materials, design, um, different aspects, precast concrete, pervious concrete. About a third of the research relates to asphalt pavement. So we're doing a lot of work on warm mix, colored mix, um, uh, perpetual pavement designs. And then about a third of the work relates to asset management, pavement management. So uh, definitely right in line with the theme of this conference, some of the, the ideas about how do we actually look at the economic benefits of different treatments and so on. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a little bit of a background on some of the work and talk about the material characterization because that's been a really important point for us in Canada because we have obviously like the US, um, a big country, lots of diversity in terms of our climatic conditions. What may work well in one area may not work well in another. And also uh, we contend with a short construction season, so that can certainly have an impact. Uh, talk a little bit about the pavement design and field investigations. Uh, we do a lot of integrated lab and field trials pavement management and some closing comments. So again, basically what we're doing is we're doing a lot of research that relates to field and lab. So sometimes we start out in the lab, we do testing of different materials and apply it in the field. A lot of times we work with our partners um, and many of our partners are actually in the room where we actually try it in the field and evaluate it. We're, we're focusing on emerging and innovative technologies um, and we've got some state of the art research infrastructure our role is to train and educate the next generation. And one of the key components to uh, the, the fourth year course that we teach to our civil engineers relates directly to preservation. So there's a component where we're actually uh, talking about if you have a road in this level, you want to maintain it in that level. Um, and then uh, to provide national and international partnerships. Um, you heard about the new TAC Pavement Asset Design and Management Guide. Um, and basically within this guide, we have a special um, section dedicated to preservation. And again, really you have to ask the question, what's driving this? Well, the primary thing that's driving it is economics. Um, we don't have enough money to spend on our road network. So how do we actually look at the, the user cost effectiveness? Um, so a lot of the work that I'm going to present here um, today, and if you're interested, um, we do have a couple of reports that, that provide all the details of this work. And what we were looking at is comparing print, um, preservation or preventive maintenance with conventional treatments. So how would that actually impact things if we looked at it from a pavement management perspective? And one of the key issues that actually came out of the work is that there was a limited amount of data supporting a lot of these preservation treatments. So as a follow-up to this work, uh, looking at monitoring. So if we take a look at the province of Ontario, um, what you'll see is the, the dense portion of the roads and where all the people live is in the south. As you go further north, it's colder. You can see a less dense set of roads. So the idea here is how do we actually look at the province and look at trying to determine where to use different treatments effectively. Um, again, there was when we started this work, there was little to nothing on cost effectiveness and primarily using conventional maintenance strategies um, and based on distress surveys and worst first repair strategies. So when we started to break the network down, as you can see, the provincial network has about 25,000 centerline kilometers and then the municipal um, network is 132,000. 
So the idea here is that we were looking at trying to look at different treatments in the lab. So what we've got here are um, some different types of analysis. So uh, we're instrumenting a lot of strain gauges and different types of treat, uh, different types of roadways, and trying to validate that performance with lab testing. Um, we're actually taking materials into the lab. So these are actually cores that have been. Some of these cores have been prepared uh, by gyratory. Others are actually cores from roads, applying different treatments, and then evaluating those treatments. Um, again, uh, looking at colored asphalt. Now, you might be thinking this is not necessarily a, a preservation treatment. However, we're starting to use this material um, to denote bus lanes. So this particular project that we're working on, um, the surface coarse layer has a, a red pigment in the asphalt. And that, again, is denoting the bus lanes. Um, and now we're getting into the, the idea, well, how are we going to maintain this? How are we going to actually keep this um, looking red? And, and then, obviously, combining um, a different fine and coarse aggregate to maintain the color, but also to uh, maintain the texture. Um, and and uh, have good performance. So, for example, uh, this is the, you can see we've got the Hamburg wheel rut tester in the lab. You can see the samples prepared in the lab versus the the field samples that we've maintained um, that we actually cored from the road and and brought them back. And and so again, when we're looking at these different types of treatments, now actually interestingly enough, what's pushing this project forward are the safety folks. The safety folks are coming to us and saying, OK, we want to denote some of these different lanes. Um, this example is a bus lane. We're also dealing with the bike lane folks and the peripheral pavement. So how do we actually manage this and maintain it? Um, We've also been doing some work looking at recycled asphalt shingles and incorporating that into hot mix. And again, uh, when we actually initially design the structure, we're actually thinking about future performance and how we actually uh, keep that surface um, as an environmental surface. So uh, giving credit to using materials um, that are actually deemed to be en environmentally um, important. Um, another uh, big aspect to quantifying performance has been doing uh, surface texture and noise measurements. And so uh, this is one of our, our trials, uh, the region of Waterloo, where you can see in the lower uh, photo we have a pass-by um, uh, measuring device. We have on-vehicle uh, measuring devices and evaluating different types of devices as they go down the road. Um, we're looking at using different surface course materials to actually help manage noise. And again, for a lot of the cities and municipalities, uh, they're looking at um, using the pavement infrastructure as an opportunity to mitigate the need for noise barriers. Uh, noise barriers are quite expensive, and as well, there's often graffiti cleanup issues associated with these types of materials. OK, so um, using uh, some of the frameworks that came out of the new TAC guide, uh, what we've actually been doing is going through and looking at applying asset management principles and trying to build in pavement preservation techniques. So of course, the top part of the figure here, I don't know if we have a pointer, but uh, the top part of the figure here is really what our current assets are. And um, where, where we're basically going in the future. And what I'd like to point out is that we've been developing models and estimates for these different pavement preservation treatments. Because again, if we're looking at trying to maintain our network, we're actually trying to develop those models. And so more specifically, coming up with asset values of what that, that road infrastructure is worth keeping it in a given state. So um, previously, uh, Don and Dave were talking about the OCI. So in our case, we're looking at a pavement condition index and looking at trying to maintain different types of uh, roads within a, within a certain area or category. And this is another really important part of the preservation. What are the cost returns? So again, trying to determine how these different treatments are impacting. 
So um, in terms of the experimental design, we were looking at different road classifications, um, different surface types. So the example I'm going to present right now is a flexible example. We looked at three distinct uh, traffic category levels. And I have to say that the high level is not a freeway high or what you would say an interstate high. It's more uh, related to a major arterial that you might have in a city. Um, we were looking at three types of indices. So a uh, pavement condition index is an index that incorporates distress and a riding measure. Riding comfort index, which actually can be exchanged for IRI. However, most of the cities and municipalities are really not using RCI as a major um, key, uh, KPI or key, key performance indicator because it has less significance for lower speed uh, facilities and then a distress manifestation index and then different pavement uh, strategies. So we were looking at uh, different sections of the network going in our pavement management system saying okay here's a one kilometer section, what are your environmental conditions, we separated the south and north because they're, they're quite distinct, looking at three different categories of weak, medium and strong subgrade because that's really going to impact your pavement structure particularly for thin structures and then looking at the timing of the strategy. So again, overall, when we looked at everything, urban, rural, northern, southern, we had 20 functional categories. And basically, within those, we looked at these different parameters, and then we actually um, got into looking at different treatments. So these were the, the typical suite of treatments that we looked at. We did also look at uh, microsurfacing um, as well. Uh, that was certainly a major treatment in some of the areas. And then you can see thin overlays, mill and patch, et cetera. And the idea here is like, and in the reports, if you're interested, we have all the details about the different types of strategies. So if we did one preservation treatment, what did it look like? Two. Um, or three, and actually with some of the road types, we ended up suggesting, um, given the volume and given the types of uh, traffic that those sections were seeing, to actually keep doing preservation. So in other words, for certain types of roads, you just want to keep them in, in the good to fair category. Um, and, and ultimately what we, this, this didn't actually turn out so good, but ultimately what we developed was a decision tree. So if you have a certain performance <coughs> level for a given type of road and you had a certain type of subgrade and you had a certain type of traffic, there were uh, distinct <coughs> recommendations that we would be providing to you to help manage. Um, and then as part of this process, we actually went through a verification. So we did all the analysis and then we took it out to the maintenance folks, the pavement management folks and said, you know, does this treatment appear to be appropriate given this scenario? So even though we developed the decision tree, we, it was really necessary to go back and say, does this make sense? And also looking at all your life cycle costs. So um, you may, you know, in some of the areas it was interesting, they were actually placing thicker initial pavement structures because in the longer term, they didn't want to have to come out and do an overlay Instead, they just wanted to have uh, some kind of a non-structural treatment. Um, so, and we came up with some recommendations. There were a whole lot of recommendations, but uh, for example, uh, for, for um, the majority of road classes, hot mix patching 10% and hot mix patching 20% was the most cost effective. So in other words, if you go out and collect your data, you would actually determine specifically where you had weakness. Um, higher uh, traffic levels, overlays were more effective, and then seals were more effective on lower volume. Um, some cases, uh, pavement, uh, the preventive maintenance only provided slight improvements. So one of the conclusions, which maybe not be uh, desirable to a lot of people at this conference, but it actually wasn't cost effective all the way across the board. There were definitely certain areas that were better suited to having the preservation. And that actually also came down to priority. And also risk. Um, and environmental conditions had a huge impact on your choice of treatment. Um, in some of the areas where we had a lot of free saw cycling, 
uh, there was definitely poor performance related to some of the treatments. Um, so for example, this is a northern road that's snow on the side for our colleagues in the south. So uh, typical type of road, major, major hauling road, um, so has a huge impact on the economy. Um, so in closing, um, when, when, you know, our, our comments are this, an experimental design is really important when you're trying to compare different types of treatments. Um, and basically what's really important is that you have a framework that you develop some decision trees to help you decide which roads are more appropriate. Um, there are several uh, key design parameters that you need to be thinking about. Your subgrade type, your traffic type, do you have a lot of heavy trucks? Do you have a lot of buses? All of these things start to come into play. Um, and certainly the biggest challenge is to determine the most appropriate time to apply the treatment. Um, and again, this, this really comes closely with distress monitoring. So if you have uh, detailed distress records, this is really going to help you um, apply your treatment at the most appropriate time. And certainly one of the things that we're working on is to develop long-term data that provides surface life for the different treatments because that is one of the areas uh, that we're lacking data. So with that, I thank you for your attention and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for your attention.